right, here we are, back with the chambering of a 6.5 284 Norma. So, uh, rechecked alignment of the barrel. That's good. So the barrel is spinning perfectly true. Just check that. And now I'm going to pre-drill. Here's our chambering reamer. 6.5 by 284, finishing chambering reamer, live pilot. I will switch out that live pilot to the bushing that fits the bore perfectly. The idea here, you can certainly cut a chamber from beginning to end with a finishing reamer if you really wanted to. However, to avoid premature wear and tear, and to save probably an hour of time, <laughs> we pre-drill. So I'm just gonna use a standard jobber length twist drill that is generally 40 to 50 thousandths smaller in diameter than the finishing chamber reamer. So this is a 7 16 standard twist drill. It measures right around 40 thousandths undersize of the shoulder area, so I'm, I'm measuring right here on the reamer itself. Then we're going to drill in deep enough to clear out material, but also we don't want to blow past where our bushing is going to ride in there. So we still want support. So basically an inch and a quarter is about as deep as we can go to get this reamer to be fully guided by the bore, like it should be. Rather than just drilling as far as the cartridge would go, then the reamer is going to have a hard time finding center. It's going to be kind of, wand maybe not wandering, but not the best way to do that. So very important to have support of the bore the entire process. So again, we're going to pre-drill. Then I'm going to switch out to a boring bar and just clean up the drilled hole with a carbide high speed, it's a carbide cutter, but a high speed, low feed rate, and a light depth of cut, just to, just to true up that surface again. Because drills are very brutal with their removal of steel. Get this back, start lathe up, and I'm gonna put some oil in the bore, and proceed to cut. All right, that should be enough. All right. Hey, it's Valentine's Day today, guys. Happy Valentine's Day to you. I didn't get you any flowers, I'm sorry. But yep, it is February 14th, 2024. All right, so, Bory Bar. AR Warner holder, AR Warner carbide cutter. So we've got three cutting surfaces. So as long as the guy doesn't drop this and break it, the carbide that is, they last for a long time. But you know, if you drop it, eh, especially like in your lathe pan, uh, they tend to break, which is quite annoying. So <laughs> we're going to go in and just gently touch off at the very end of the hole, which is right there. Set a zero. Okay, we want high speed. High ripums and a low feed rate, slow feed rate of something like four thousandths per rep. All right, it's gonna touch off here. Add a little bit of feed.
Yeah, that looks much better uh, on the inside. And again, all we're doing is cleaning up the drill hole so that that reamer has a nice, precise, concentric, round hole to follow rather than a drill hole that's all horribly rough. Okay, so that operation is complete. Let's see what we got here. Yep, that took about 10. So that leaves us about 30 thousandths of material to cut with the chambering reamer, finishing reamer. Now, as I was saying before, there's, right there's the bore, right? So <clears throat> it's, the live pilot is captured in the actual bore of the barrel before, before it starts cutting, right? So it's following the bore true with all that material gone. So that means all we gotta do is basically finish off the chamber. There's some depth to go. So here's a, here's a round, so it'll show you. So we're gonna be pretty deep into that <clears throat> before we're to the proper depth. Gotta switch up and uh, get the boring bar out, get the reamer holder and get the proper pilot on there. And we'll be back to uh, chamber. I'm not going to hold, show the whole process. It's getting very, very redundant anymore. I'm surprised that anybody watches these videos anymore, but uh, uh, people seem to like them, so I'll just keep doing it. Uh, I'm trying to make them interesting, but there's, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of the same old, same old. All right, so anyway, I'm going to pause this and be right back. Cool, here we are, ready to begin reaming. The uh, GTR reamer holder has three spring-loaded set screws. And the idea here is you know, use these three to get this aligned very, very close to the bore. And so visually it looks pretty centered, so we're gonna go in until that bushing uh, enters the actual bore. And it's looking like it's entering straight. I'm looking, I'm watching the reamer as it goes in to make sure it's not kicking down or up or sideways. Looking good. And it's actually staying where it's uh, supposed to. Okay, so that's good. <clears throat> We've got the lathe running super slow uh, just to make sure everything's cool before we proceed. All right, so let's go ahead and take our first cut. Oil, oil. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and just take that first cut slowly, slowly, and as always, I'm just feeling here. Any kind of listening and feeling. I'm not pushing on this, I'm just feeling. Any vibrations or any weirdness we can go ahead and fix. There's some chips coming out. So that means we're cutting. <laughs> Duh. There's no weird squealing or any kind of vibrations or chatter or anything like that. So we're going to just give it a little more and then pull out and see what we got. Okay. Probably enough for now. Yeah. So it's cut a little bit in there. 
I clean off the reamer and the bore inside the bore. Okay, there's the reamer. All right. Okay, let's check, uh, make sure we're not getting any run out while we're uh, early in the game here. And then we'll just touch off. Something to check. Okay, so that's the pre board section. And I'm going to come down here. Okay, there's the pre board section just ahead of where we were cutting. And again, so I had the, the boring bar, so I, I took that pass, and I didn't actually push forward before I pulled out. So the boring bar just did a very cleanup, a very light cleanup on its way out. So that's all you're seeing there, that little jump. Uh, that was my fault. I was not thinking when I did that. But anyway, so there's the, the pre-board section, and then we'll come back to where the uh, reamer's cutting. And there we go. That is smooth. There's a tiny wisp there, a couple tents. Come up on the transition. Back into the pre-board section. And then the reamed section. So yeah, that's good. <clears throat> We're still spinning true. And uh, we're good to go. So really no need to keep showing this. I mean, it's, it's a process keeps repeating. So we'll feed in, clean off, feed in, clean off, feed in, clean off until we're to headspace depth. So I'm gonna cut it here. There's really no reason to show this. Uh, then we'll come back when we're close and we'll finish this off. All right, just a little update here. Uh, about halfway, yeah, we're about third, three quarters of the way through. I uh, just thought I'd uh, check run out. So I do, I check run out <clears throat> um, a quarter of the way in, halfway in, and three quarters and as I'm getting close to the end. So just wanted to show we're still within a few tenths. You know, the machine is actually running. So you'll see a little deflection there, but I mean, we're still, this chamber is, is running dead true. A little bit further up in. Sorry. A little further in. It's about as far as I can get in there. A little more. Yep, that's it for that. Okay. So we're riding the taper. That's why the needle's going down. <clears throat> like you're seeing. But, uh... You know, like I said, I just check... I check pretty much every step of the way in the chambering process. It's extremely critical. Things don't start getting uh, getting away from you <clears throat> during this uh, operation. Uh, so anything, anyway, just a little update here. Uh, I'm freehanding this, so just a second. Let's get this out of the way. <clears throat> and then uh, grab a go gauge. I'll show you we've got, <clears throat> yeah. Half inch left or so, three eighths inch, half inch to go. So we'll check again after a few more passes. Um, at this point, the propensity of it, of it getting out of alignment is very, very, very small. Uh, if, if anything, it'll happen in the beginning. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, like I said, just a just an update on this barrel. Six five two eighty four. Okay, here we go. Here we are at the end of chambering. 
So I know we're good. I think the first thing to show will be run out or the lack thereof, that is. So let's just touch off in here. Lowest part. Okay, and then spin. And now once again, a couple tenths of, of deflection here. So you've got to realize the reamer is following the bore on a pilot, on a piloted bushing, which is, it has to have clearance, right? Like if it were a one-to-one -one fit, it would be a press fit or interference fit. And literally you would have to hammer it in there, right? So, tiny bit of clearance. What I'm trying to show here is the con concentricity of the chamber. This is a half thousandths indicator, so we're, we're swaying less than halfway between each line, and each line would be 0 0.0005, one half of one thousandths of an inch. So to have a few tenths of run out from within, what's the length of this chamber here? Hold on. Let me just go ahead and drop that. You know, so if you think about it, <clears throat> we've got, so don't worry, we're, we're going from the mouth of the case to the base of the case. Let's go this way. So we'll say two inches and a hundred, whatever, 175 thousandths. 2.175, I'm sure it's longer than that, old, whatever. But. So within over two inches of travel, we have a few tenths of run out for the entire length. Let's, uh, I'll do some headspace checks while, uh, while we're here, and then I'll zoom in and show you the superior surface finish we got. There's no, haven't polished a thing yet, uh, but the uh, surface finish there is, is real good. Let's grab our action and the bolt. And I'm just going to blow out just to make sure there's no obstruction. Shut up. Okay, so clean. Uh, it's not degreased, but there's no chips or debris inside there. Let me, before I cut myself, let me get this out of here. Because I will manage to bash that cutter and bleed all over. <clears throat> okay, so that's out. Action, screwing on. Still a just perfect fit on the threads. You know, again, there's no wiggle, no, no rattle. Just enough clearance to screw on. Again, can't be zero, zero clearance. It has to have some. <sighs> Torques up very nicely. Very nice hard stop right there. Okay, so we got the bolt. It's closed. We got a little clearance. Wiggle back and forth. We're going to grab the go gauge. So go gauge. You get past the extractor and it drops with no with no wiggle there. So we are flat against the headspace gauge to the dab line of the chamber where it where it stops. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the go gauge. So no go gauge over the extractor and. That, that ain't closing at all. Like, I can't enforce it. That's a very, very hard stop on the no go. Okay? And then get my tape. And so we're going to put a one piece of cellophane tape on the back of this gauge. Okay. Tape on the back. Tape on the back. I'm just going to cut it so I can get it into the bolt face with no 
Yes. Okay, there's that. Staying in frame, hopefully. This is the go gauge with a piece of tape on the back. Like I could force that down. Obviously, it's just tape, so it'll squish out of the way. But once this action is torqued on, say, well, not that much, maybe that much, that is going to be a hard stop, just like the no-go gauge. While still allowing the go gauge to close, just like that, as if there was nothing in the chamber. So the torquing of the action, and we're talking about 100 foot-pounds, brings everything into alignment. So after years and years of doing this and in plenty of experience, I know kind of where to stop. And it's not like I invented this technique or anything, but there is a pretty big difference between the go and the no-go. A little bit of slop. So we're just taking out unnecessary slop while still stay staying in the safe specified dimensions of the chamber. Now, <clears throat> if this was a switch barrel of some type that did not require, there I go again, that did not require torquing, say like a, you know, a prefit and a guy that doesn't have the wrenches and the vices and all that, and it actually like hand tight and then you cinch it down with a collar. If there's nothing wrong with that system, but if in that case, I would actually chamber this actually a little less. I would want a hard, hard stop on the tape and a drop free on the on the go gauge naked. I don't do that. Obviously, I have the proper equipment <laughs> to properly chamber a barrel uh, by using machine tooling and also the proper uh, wrenches and vices. <clears throat> So, headspace perfect. All the dimensions are hit, accounted for, and achieved. Now, one last step here is going to be chamfering the uh, mouth of the chamber itself and the recess. So, we're talking chamfer the mouth of the chamber right here and the, the recess mouth right here. So, we're going to put a little 45 degree chamfer. You know, one sixteenth of an inch or so, nothing major. Just, just a little break that sharp edge, so that as the cartridge feeds in, we're not shaving off brass. <laughs> it helps with feeding as well. Um, a big long cartridge like this really has no problem feeding, but, but uh, it's going to eliminate any sharp corners. All right, we're going to slap some chamfers on the mouths that I pointed out earlier. Just slight chamfer. Yeah, this is a tight ass cut. So uh, I think this is as close as I can get you guys. So anyway, let's just do this. Slight chamfer right there. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, how's that look? That looks pretty good. Now let's go out to this outside one. Right there. <laughs> A little more than I wanted, but it's okay. Yeah. Just like that. All right. That's it. Just a slight chamfer. Uh, yeah. That ought to give me a YouTube award. 
pretty good. Okay, so now we're just going to go into some emery cloth and polish that. Oh, yeah, I think I said I'd give you a shot of a... That's eh, kind of good. Okay, yeah, there's chips in there, but... Trying to show you the surface finish before polishing. So it's pretty good. It needs some polish. So the chamfering allows the cartridge to feed without snagging and just better, better feeding. And then the polish is just going to literally polish the chamber walls so that the case doesn't get stuck. You know, just polish out any imperfections. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna run faster here. <laughs> that might be a little on the fast side. I'm gonna shake everything off my lathe here. I'd like to run that fast, but I don't wanna self-destruct the lathe here. Alright, that should be better. So, yep, just polishing. That's all I'm doing. This is 320, and this is where I stop. As far as sandpaper goes, and then I'll go to some uh, Scotch Brite. Let's give it the bling. Yep, I polish inside that recess. I polish this nose area, even though it doesn't matter. It just looks professional. Looks nice. Added touch. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. All right, a little Scotch Bright to finish it off. It's snowing outside, and it's very cold. So, yeah, we haven't gotten anything this winter. The older I get, the less I like snow, but... Then again, I also hate summertime when it's freaking hot. I hate the heat. Oh, yeah. There you go. So, I don't know, deal. <clears throat> so, let's clean that up a little bit. Clean off the die cam. Some of that crap oil out of there <clears throat> and that patch is still relatively clean Let's see what we got Let's see what we got here this is a finished breach Get my head in the way here. Oh. Yeah, I'll do. I think that's fine. I'm supposed to be getting my uh, short action customs action wrenches in today. Pretty excited about that. Oh, God. It's actually it's snowing pretty bad. 
or maybe I won't. <laughs> so you can see the reflection pretty good. Now there's still some oils and anti-seas and other strange substances on this, but it gives you an idea. Anyway, there's a completed breach. This is a Bartlian M24 contour. One and eight twist chambered in 6.5 by 284 Norma. For a defiance, a defiance, deviant action. <clears throat> okay. So this part's done. We're gonna flip the barrel around, do the muzzle end, and the barrel work will be done for this guy. So let me, uh, I'm gonna pause the video and reconfigure, and we'll be back with the muzzle work. It's gonna get the barrel out of the chuck, flip it around. All right, there we go. That's a barrel, huh? Okay, should have just enough sticking out there. <coughs> okay, so we're gonna grab the breech by the threads, but these uh, spider set screws have brass tips on them. So that won't damage anything. So no uh, worry about damaging anything there. And really, I'm just holding this. It's not like I'm cranking, torquing down tight on it. You know what I'm saying? So I'll just get it roughly centered visually. And then we'll get a dial test indicator in there and center it up proper. And that's leaving me enough enough sticking out there to part off the uh, the nasty the nasties and give us a nice fresh bore to work with. So and get this end roughly centered off of that uh, nice concentric chamber that we verified. So we could center off of the threads, off of the recess, or the chamber. So I'm going to go with the chamber. That's the most important part. That's in line with the bore. That's better. Hopefully I can get in here and work. Kinda. Okay, went a little bit far. That's closer. Let's still see this. Making sure you can see the dang indicator. Okay. Loosen one, tighten one. Now the high side. Loosen one, tighten one. And we'll move to a wrench. Go to the high side. <laughs> this is hard. This is very hard to do. Okay. Loosen about half, or sorry, tighten about half. Go to the high side. Tighten. A couple tents. That one's loose. Uh, high side. 
So at this point, I'm going to go to the front. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the four jaw chuck, the muzzle end, and get that centered. Come back here, check this, go back to the muzzle, recenter until we're reading zero on both ends. So, like always, I'm going to use these shims to protect the barrel. <clears throat> And also reduces the surface, um, the, uh, what the heck am I trying to say, reduces the amount of chuck jaw that is touching the barrel, which allows for the pivoting action to be achieved a little bit more efficiently. Okay, one more. Okay, now those are being held by the four jaw, so I can remove the live center. And move my test indicator up here. And we're going to get this in here. Yeah, that's good. All right. Go to the high side, tighten. Couple tents. So that's good for here. Now, like I said earlier, I'm gonna go back to the to the back end and do the same thing, make sure that's centered, kind of lock that in, come back here and check this one one more time and get it as close to zero run out as, as possibly can. What I'm gonna do is part off oh about a quarter inch of this muzzle. I can't recall if I used to had footage of the bore scope of this particular barrel. I don't think I did. But generally, the uh, manufacturers, they have hardened centers that go into the uh, bore on either end, and that's what holds them uh, as they contour the barrel and do, do all the outside stuff. So that tends to to smush out and distort the uh, rifling that's in there. So I just want to get rid of that a little bit. What was it like, Jason, to cross? And, uh, start from kind of a fresh uh, section of barrel. So a quarter inch should be plenty. Um, like I said, I don't think I got footage of it, but there is a, there is a little schmutz there, right there at the beginning. So we're going to get rid of that portion and then face it flat, re, or I'll check center again, make sure it didn't slip out one way or another. Um, and then 
uh, proceed to crown it. So no threads, uh, 11 degree crown, target crown, uh, simple stuff. There we Degree crown. I'm going to set the compound. crown <clears throat> so now I'm gonna set it to 60 and then just just wisp the, the internal crown just to 60 right there okay just got done cutting that internal 60 degree crown and polished it a little bit so to the teachings of Jesus. There you go. Got a little flat on the outside. Right here. 11 degree. And then a very small 60 degree. That's as close as I can get. So, yeah, there you can kind of see it. So there's a precision crown. The machine work for this barrel is now complete. So we got to get it torqued on. Okay, remove that. That is 100 foot pounds. And the short action customs modular action wrench survived. It's a 284 Winchester made by Manson. And the reamer is also a Manson. Yep. 
okay and then and then absolutely nothing there in terms of forward and aft wiggle it's bared board up board it's bearing right up against the back of the gauge okay now we're going to take a piece of tape and do this little thing this will increase the length by about two thousandths kind of somewhere between the no-go and the go uh, just ensures like that match grade headspace all right so the tape on the back it's hard to see tape on the back of the go gauge that is a hard stop not closing so headspace is perfect <clears throat> tape off <clears throat> no go obviously it's not going to close on that all right <clears throat> same place there and then no firing pin assembly no fire control anything like that uh, we're just going to test it with our customer supplied round and there you go so here again it's Perfect. There's no play. The bolt handle is snug on the back of that case. So I don't know if you noticed before, but with the gauges, this the the, the handle was just kind of loose, right? Well, this is bearing right up against the back of that case. So headspace is exactly where we want it with 100 foot pounds of torque. <clears throat> so that ensures the barrel will not come off without tools and uh, cartridge is perfectly perfectly contained in its uh, chamber cool so awesome this uh, barreled action is now complete take it out of the vise and uh, next step is going to be the stock work <laughs>